Hello everyone, Ted Fletcher with FMS. So I have an application where I have a Jace and I needed to hook up some Modbus RTU serial devices to COM1 on that Jace unit and noticed on the Jace that it doesn't have that COM port set up by default on the unit. So I'm going to show you the process of loading the proper network driver to get this to work. So first thing you need to do, you need to have workplace opened log into the particular station that you're working with when you come down and look at drivers you want to expand that out and then we can see the networks currently set up you want to have the modbus async network selected if you don't already have this in your palette you can just click on your open palette folder type in modbus and then it's that first option that you see as far as up here modbus async so you can click on OK, load that in place. I already have mine, so I'm going to click Cancel. So first thing we need to do when we look at this, we need to add that COM port that's going to be dedicated, or the I should say the driver that's going to be designated for that COM port. So if we left click and highlight the Modbus Async Network, we just left click, hold that, drag it up, hover over drivers, release the left click, we can see that it comes up with our name. See, this is for COM1. I'm just going to put on the end that this is COM1. Then I'm going to click on OK. So now that we can see, we have that shown available. So if we double click on it, we can see that we don't have any devices or any config going on. So the proper thing to do here is to right click when you have that name selected, go up to the views and go to that AX property sheet. So once the sheet opens, we can see that we have a fault coming through on the status and it says no port selected for Modbus communication. So this we want to correct. In order to correct that, we just have to designate the COM port name. So on the JS8000, you have COM1, COM2, and then if you're using the RS45 add-on cards to the JACE 8000, then you would just then designate either COM3, COM4, COM5, COM6, depending on how many of those modules that you have connected. So I'm going to come down to the serial port config, and here you'll see port name and it says none. So this is what breaks that initial communication when you deploy this network. So here, we just want to call it that COM port name, and this is case sensitive. So if I was to do capital C, lowercase om, digit one, and then save it, we're going to get a different message saying could not enable Modbus found exception, COM1 is not a valid port. So here, in order to fix it, we just want to use all uppercase. So COM, the digit one, click on save, and then we can see our health resolves that we actually have good communications now to that port. Then depending on the serial devices you're hooking on to COM1, you want all your serial devices set to the same parameters as far as the baud rate, the data bits, stop bit parity. Uh, so here we just go down through. Tritium gives you about every option when it comes to selecting a baud rate. So we're going to select 19200 because that's what I'm going to be using in this application. So we select 19200 baud. Uh, data bits, eight data bits is correct on mine, but you can see they give you five, six, seven, eight as far as drop down options. Uh, with stop bit, we're going to be using stop bit one, but same thing. They give you either stop bit one or stop bit two as an option. And then parity for this test and deployment would be none, but you can see they give you options of odd, even, mark, and space. So now that we have this COM port configured correctly and we have good stable communications to the COM, we're going to hit save. So on the other end of the serial line hooked to COM1, I'm using a USB to 45 converter and then using a program from Modbus Tools called Modbus Slave. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a test device. So if I go back to the palette and left click on Modbus async device. I just have to grab that, drag it up, drop it. Here I'm just gonna call it Modbus test device one. Click on okay. Now we see our have our device listed. 
So I'm going to expand this. And select that. Go to the AX property sheet. Uh, based on the simulator, I'm going to be testing using device ID or slave ID 1. So that is set correctly. So then we would just want to expand this. Double left click on points. Kind of gives us a blank page. I'm going to add 10 holding registers just to test the port with. Technically, you could use one, so it all your personal preference. So I'm going to select numeric point. Because on my simulator, I'm going to be using Modbus holding registers 40,001 to 40,010. Number to add, go to 10. Here we'll go 40001. And then my simulator is going to be doing 16-bit um, integers. So we can just leave this set to the integer type. If you had something different or going directly to the device, just set up your profile accordingly. All right, click on OK. We're not going to change the names on these because it's just for a quick test. So I'm going to put this down in place. Then we can see everything's going to start airing out because I don't have that Modbus simulator running. So on here, I'm just going to minimize, go over to my Modbus slave. And again, I have this serial cable hooked up to the end of the RS-45 line connecting to COM1. So I'm going to do open, oop, file open and do this MB slave so here I have it configured for function 3 which is our 40,000 set for the holding registers ID set to 1 which matches our slave device and then I have 40,001 to 40,010 this I set to a auto increment otherwise I just call out you know the holding register 40,001 is 1 2 3 going down through the list so here I'm going to click connect. So now we can see that this is going out, talking 19200, 891, and we have this data available with this last register doing the auto increment. So I'm just going to drag this over to my other screen, we'll go back and we'll look at workplace. Um, here, you just need to select a device, go to actions, and then left click on the ping option under actions and then if everything works we should see this clean up and here we see all of those registers are now populated so we know that our com port is set up and configured and there's no issues with that um, i'm using the normal pull rate which is every five seconds so here if we just watch it real quick should see it yep went and updated so perfect See, there's two COM ports on this unit. If I wanted to, I could actually take this COM1 and I can duplicate it just by highlighting. Go down to duplicate, left click. You can see it already put the COM2 on the end. So we'll click on OK. And here I'll go to the device in itself to where we go to AX property sheet. So you can see here it came back saying no con uh, no port selected for Modbus communication. So if we go back down, every time we replicate one of these Modbus async networks, it'll automatically put the port name back to none. So here we want to just change this to COM2, making sure that COM is all uppercase. Here I'm just going to leave it set to a generic as far as more of a 9600 for the baud rate, which is typical with a lot of field devices, eight data bits, one stop bit, and parity set to none. Uh, leave the Modbus data mode to RTU. So here, if I hit save, perfect. Now that we see that COM port set up correctly. So I'm gonna go through and just set this to false, save it, then whenever we need it, we'll enable it. So want to thank you for your time. If you've got an application that you'd like to discuss or a video that you're curious about seeing, please reach out to FMS Integration and let us know. So I hope you have a good day and thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.